Alexa, turn on the studio. Hey, what's going on everyone? My name is Cole Kakimus and welcome back to the channel. Today, I'll be giving you guys an updated desk setup slash YouTube studio tour for 2022. This is honestly my dream space and I'm at a point where I'm really happy with how things are situated. I uploaded the first video on this channel in the beginning of 2021 and since then, a lot has changed not only in this space, but just in the production quality of my content that I feel like now going into the new year is the perfect time to go over what's changed and how I use everything here in my creative workflow. Just for context, I use this desk to edit photos, videos like the one you're watching now, build and design websites, and game. To get straight into it, the real star of the show is the 34-inch Ultroid monitor from LG. It has a 21 by 9 aspect ratio and a 3440 by 1440 pixel resolution. Color accuracy isn't exceptional, but I've been able to get the settings to where they look pretty good for what I do. Although, in the next year or so, I definitely do want to look for one with better color accuracy as I want to make sure both my photos and videos are looking their best. Definitely the biggest complaint I have from using it over this past year is it's not the sharpest and depending on how close I'm sitting to the screen, things can get a little fuzzy. This guy does take up quite a bit of room on the desk itself, but in my opinion, it's so worth it. Having all that screen real estate makes multitasking a breeze. It's basically just like having two monitors, but without the bezel in between. I'm able to have multiple windows open when working on a website and view my entire Final Cut timeline to speed up my editing process. I even have enough room to keep Notion open on the side to reference my B-roll clips so I know which one is supposed to go where in the video. When gaming, if you're playing a title that supports the 21 by 9 aspect ratio, you'll get an insanely immersive experience with a wider FOV, although with the 75 hertz refresh rate on this specific model, it's by no means the best option. Although right now, that's a sacrifice I'm willing to make. Where this really shines and I love it the most is when playing story games like Red Dead Redemption or Cyberpunk. By this time, a lot of AAA titles have started supporting ultra wide by default. There are still plenty that don't, and you're going to have to deal with the black bars on the side. At this point, though, I've played enough hours in games like Life is Strange that have the bars that it really doesn't even bother me, which is why I don't really see myself going for a 16x9 as my main monitor anytime soon. I don't see this happening, but I really wish the PS5 could at least support it in some titles. Right now, again, you're going to have the black bars. This specific monitor that I'm using was actually discontinued by LG a few months back, but there are a lot that they sell today that have very similar specs. If you look just above the monitor, you'll see that I have the BenQ screen light bar. This was something that was sent out to me, and at first, kind of thought it was a bit gimmicky, but after having it for all these months, it's so nice to use. Plugging into the back of the monitor and sitting on top, it'll light up the area on your desk without producing glare on the screen, which is perfect for me because I'm constantly working late nights trying to finish up the edit for the morning. There are a few buttons on top that you can use to adjust the brightness as well as the color temperature. Turning around to the back, you'll see that I installed an RGB LED strip. This one is from Govi and only ran me like 30 bucks, which was definitely worth it. Now it's not anything special, but for the price, it does what it's supposed to do. It makes the set a pop a little more and go along with my color scheme. You can control it via Alexa or the iPhone app, but honestly, I really like how this blue preset one looks. Looking down a little more, I have another Govi light strip on the back of the desk. It was just around the same price and has worked really well. I've had it actually since last year when I first built this setup. While it works perfectly in the app, I have had some issues trying to get it pairing correctly with Alexa. I like to keep it on a static color, which looks great and again, is awesome for working at night. Plugging to the monitor via USB-C, allowing for a minimal one cable setup to power almost all of my creative workflow, is the 16-inch M1 Pro MacBook Pro. Oh man, I, I still can't stand saying that name. This thing really is an absolute powerhouse and handles everything I need to do flawlessly, so this is something that I don't see the need to upgrade for several more years. My configuration has a terabyte of storage, which I do find myself filling up really quickly when importing all my footage for a video, as well as 16 gigabytes of RAM that's been able to handle my workflow with few issues. The ProMotion display is gorgeous and feels very fluid, so doing anything on here is a joy. Me personally, I really like having larger displays so that I can multitask on the go, but recently I have been using it more in clamshell mode with the ultra wide. With this, I have it sitting on an all laptop dock from GroveMe that's built extremely well and looks fantastic. The wooden finish adds a lot of contrast to my space, and sitting next to the money tree in the corner, it gives off a really warm and cozy vibe. It's definitely up there in price at $120, but with Grove Main, you really do get what you pay for. While the Mac really does handle everything I throw at it perfectly, there are still times that I turn back to my custom PC, mainly for gaming nowadays. I initially built it two years ago in January 2020, but just this past week, I swapped the case, fans, and RAM to give it a much-needed aesthetic update. I have it in the Lean Lee O11 Dynamic Mini Snow White case, which looks so good. 
Cable management is great, which made the building process go super smooth. What's unique about this guy is that it can fit mini ITX, micro ATX, and ATX size motherboards in this compact form factor. I'm using an ATX board from MSI, which has worked great, and what I love is both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth are built in. Although, if you are going to be gaming a lot, using Ethernet is your best option. One thing to note, though, is that it only fits SFX power supplies, which I did not know until I got my hands on it, which it's my fault, but I did have to go out and buy a new 750-watt one from Corsair. I still wanted to use this case, and my ATX power supply that I've been using the past couple years doesn't even get close to fitting. For fans, I'm using all Lean Lee Unis, which are awesome because they connect together with the daisy chain tag, so you only have to use two cables for each fan cluster that plugs into the hub. I have three 120mm mounted at the top set to exhaust, three more 120mm mounted on the bottom set to intake, and then I have two more coming, which are 140mm that I'm going to be putting on the radiator and setting them to intake. The CPU is an Intel i7-9700K, which has worked really well, but later this year, I'd like to switch over to a new Ryzen one. My AIO cooler is the NZXT Kraken X62. I love the design of it, and it looks really cool. It's not one of those new ones with like the LCD display you can put whatever on, but it still performs fine. Next to it is my new RAM kit, which is two sticks of 16GB, 3200MHz Trident Z Royals, and man, do these look dope. I've had my eyes on these guys for the longest time, and finally, I decided to pull the trigger. While it's probably overkill for pretty much everything I do, having 32 gigs finally and the option to go to 64 really gives me peace of mind that I'm future proof. I'm still using the RTX 2070 Super because the stock is disgusting right now and I refuse to pay scalper prices for a newer one. It's able to push around 60 FPS in nearly all games at high settings and an ultra wide aspect ratio at 1440p, which is perfect because the refresh rate is only 75 hertz anyways. But long term, I'd love to be able to get a more capable GPU and higher refresh rate monitor so I can experience smoother frames in game. Then to finish it off, I have two one terabyte SSDs that make booting into Windows and games super quick and give me enough storage to have plenty of applications downloaded. Getting to the desk itself, I have the oh so original white Alex drawers. In all seriousness, they're really great and you can't go wrong with them for the price. I'll admit I do not have a good storage solution with them, I kinda just throw crap in there, but they look good and keep things up to desk, so I'm alright. On top of them, I install these furniture risers which bring up the tabletop and also give a little bit of room underneath where you can store things. Again, this is where I just throw crap. I love the way these stands make the desk look, and for being like 20 bucks, they've been great. The tabletop really doesn't slide around a lot, at least compared to when it was just sitting flat on top. The tabletop is another unoriginal one from Ikea, the Linmon measuring at about 47 inches long and 23 inches deep. With the PC and monitor, things definitely get a little cramped, but in my current space, I have doors on either side and nowhere else to really put the desk, so I'm kind of stuck with this tabletop for a little while. After a year of use, it's really showing its age. There's dents around it from my PC case, and the paint is chipping off all over. But I really can't complain too much, because it was $30. Like, I'm, it was $30. If you're looking at building a setup yourself, I would steer clear from it, because while it is very affordable, just putting an extra $50 towards a more solid countertop is going to give you a much better experience. Because this table is pretty much just made of cardboard, I can't base mount my monitor, so this is definitely something that I want to swap out as soon as possible to give my setup a new vibe. Although, overall, I really do like how the white finish looks. Underneath the desk, I have the IKEA Signum cable management tray, which works really well and is simple to use. All the cables I have running underneath lay on top and stay very neat. I'm not currently using anything else to tidy my cables, so as a $15 solution, this is a must-buy in my opinion. Looking above the setup, you'll see I have three orb posters mounted on the wall from Link Supply. You may recognize these, and that's because they're made by Allier, who also makes tech videos on YouTube. The prints are really high quality, and I just have them in these nice white frames that I got from Michaels. I've never actually seen anyone else using these in the setup, so I guess it makes it a little unique, and they just, they look sweet. One at the desk, I sit in the autonomous ergo chair 2, which has been a pretty decent budget chair. You can change around the height of the armrests, headrest, angle you sit at, and all that sort of stuff to your liking. Focusing solely on aesthetics, it does look really nice and modern. Because of its ergonomic design, it makes it easier to keep a good posture, which is very important, especially when you're spending long hours at the desk. The cushion is pretty thin though, which doesn't make it the most comfortable, and the armrests are just disappointing. They basically have no cushion in them and are always squeaking whenever they move, and it annoys the hell out of you. The way the headrest is positioned makes it so that you basically need to be leaning back in order to actually use it, but luckily, I don't have any neck pain from this, at least yet. But just to get to the point with it, don't buy it, because I checked their website. And they rebranded this chair, they call it like the, the Ergo Plus or something like that. And it doesn't seem like they changed anything, yet charge like $200 more. Now it's not a terrible chair by any means, but there's so many other options out there. And definitely within the next few years, I'll be investing in something much better. For speakers in the setup, I'm using the Audio Engine A2 Pluses, which I cannot recommend enough. The design itself is super clean with their white finish and goes along well with the other peripherals on the desk. They're pretty compact, but because I am so limited on space, they do take up a bit of room. Their build quality is top notch and they feel premium. I have them sitting on the DS1 stands also from Audio Engine that angle them up more towards my ears. Sound quality in my opinion is really good, they sound super clear and make listening to music or podcasts while working great. I'm 
I'm honestly using these like 80% of the time I'm at the setup because I just love them so much. One thing to note is that the base is pretty lacking. So if that's something you care a lot about, they might not be the best option, but you can go out and buy a subwoofer. I haven't personally tried it, so I can't really say how well it works. They do connect via Bluetooth. And really the only issue I've had using them is that pairing between devices is such a pain. It's always like a five minute project, turning them on and off, trying to get them to connect. I am by no means an audiophile, but I really do think these are a great all around option for a lot of people. Although if I really want to focus my work, I'll throw in the AirPods Pros, AirPod Pros, which quite honestly have been my favorite purchase from the past couple of years. They connect seamlessly between my Mac, iPad, and iPhone, and I've never had any issues with battery life. Sound quality is pretty good, but most notably, noise canceling works very well for me, so if I just need to get all in on work and not get distracted by anything, these are my go-to. Although, if I'm on PC and will be gaming, I'll go ahead and grab the Logitech G Pro Xs. These are seriously my favorite gaming headphones of all time. Sound quality, again, is really good, and the microphone inside is seriously impressive. But the thing I love the most about them is just the design. They're not super gamery, but rather clean and minimal, so they really fit into the aesthetic I'm going for. I really wish more companies would follow suit because I'm just sick of the whole gamery look that products have to have. I just want something that's going to fit in my setup, not be obnoxious, and still perform well while gaming. But looking back to the desk, this is by far the product I get asked about the most. This is the Amazon Echo Spot, which I use as a smart alarm slash desk clock. You can actually do a lot on it, like listen to music, podcasts, see the news. But for me, I just have it as a cool looking device to check the time that will ask the weather each morning before going out. I'm a really big fan of it, but the circle design isn't the most practical if you want to be viewing content. And the most annoying thing is that every so often, it'll flip to like a recommendation screen, basically showing things that you can ask Alexa, which is just stupid. I don't care. But I've been able to change the settings where it rarely flips off the main screen. What I do have set up is to show the weather forecast and current conditions, which is nice to have here at a glance. I thought it got discontinued, but at least in the US, it is available for purchase on Amazon. At $120 though, unless you can get it on sale, I'd recommend just looking at the Show 5, which gives you a more practical design and a lot more screen real estate at a lower price. Looking further down on the desk, you'll see my mouse pad from OrbitKey. They did send this out to me a while ago, but I've been really impressed, which is why I still use it today. Its leather design is super high quality, and the tray at the top is nice to keep a pen or apple pencil, and then there's a nice magnet that you can use to keep your cables tidy. Additionally, you can lift up the pad to access a little hideaway underneath if you want to keep papers, but I honestly haven't found much use for this. The size is nice, but I would prefer it to be a little longer so that I can fit more of my peripherals. Speaking of, on top of the pad, my keyboard of choice is the Keychron Q1, which I've absolutely loved using. It's a fantastic budget custom mechanical keyboard that you can tweak to your liking. I've been wanting to get more into this world of mechanical keyboards, and this really is a great introduction. It's a 75% layout, meaning you get all the function and arrow keys. The thing I love the most about Keychron is that they really keep the Mac user experience in mind as they have the Mac modifier and media keys printed on the keycaps. The switches I chose are Gatoron Fountain Browns, which are actually pre-lubed and sound so good. The wet and gray color scheme of the ABS keycaps look really good and feel great to type on. They aren't shined through though, so it does make seeing the backlight a bit harder. There are a bunch of different onboard lighting profiles and colors, but if you have the patience, I don't, you can use the VIA software to configure lighting as well as remap the keys as you wish. In the top right corner, I added a custom badge, which is just my C logo. I love the personal touch it adds to the board because it really makes it mine. The build quality is top notch, the casing is made of a nice aluminum that feels super sturdy. Although it is pretty thick, so I'd recommend picking up some sort of wrist rest. I'm using a wooden one from Keychron that's pretty comfortable and much like a laptop stand adds a lot of contrast to the space. This guy is actually the reason I've become more interested in wooden accessories and plan on adding more to the space in the future. The included coil cable is, in my opinion, really high quality and looks great. Do note though that this is a wired only board, so you're not going to be able to connect it via Bluetooth unlike Keychron's other boards. It's super hard to beat at its $169 price tag, so if you're looking into getting a mechanical keyboard, especially one that you can upgrade later down the line, definitely check this one out. My productivity mouse of choice is the Logitech MX Master 2S. Its ergonomic design not only looks great, but makes it super comfortable when using it for long hours. My favorite feature by far is the side scroll wheel, which makes it great to navigate through Final Cut Pro timelines. Additionally, you have two buttons on the side and then actually one of the thumb that can all be configured in the Logi Options software. Underneath the mouse, I'm using the Delta Hub Carpio 2.0, which was sent out to me around six months back and I've used it pretty much every day since. This thing is a wrist rest for your mouse, which elevates your wrist to prevent long-term health issues like carpal tunnel. It collides really well across the mouse pad and is very comfortable in my palm. What I will say is that it does take some time to get used to. It feels awkward at first, but once you've used it for a couple of weeks, it becomes second nature. Really, my only grip with it is that it doesn't work well for gaming because it's probably just going to slip away. In addition to the mouse, something I picked up recently was the Apple Magic Trackpad. For the first month or so after getting my new MacBook, I didn't use it at all on my ultra wide and was just working straight off the display. So once I was back to an external monitor, the thing I was missing the most when editing or designing was a trackpad. Trying to zoom in with a mouse is just a pain, so having an external trackpad for me is very much worth it. Because my mouse pad is a little short, I can't fit it on, but I just have it sitting next to the side of my mouse for quick access whenever I want to maneuver around. 
As I mentioned earlier, I do use this setup for gaming, so whenever I play, I change up the peripherals just a bit. For the mousepad, I have a MM300 extended from Corsair. It's really long, measuring 930 millimeters or 36.6 inches long, and 300 millimeters or 12 inches wide. This is large enough to have my keyboard on the pad with plenty of room for my mouse, giving me loads of control in game. Gliding across it is super smooth, and it's built pretty well, having anti fray edges that have held up nicely after two years of use. Most recently, I picked up the Logitech G Pro X Superlight, which is now my new favorite gaming mouse. It has great build quality, looks really nice, feels great in the hand, and is super responsive. I do also have the Razer Viper Ultimate, which I actually prefer the design and stand of, but I kind of flip flop between them now. Like yesterday, I was using the Viper. Maybe today, it was the Superlight. <laughs> Alright, this is how I have fun, okay? One of the larger, in terms of cost, upgrades I made was to the audio setup. I'm still using the Rode PSA1 boom arm stand. It's super high quality, it moves in pretty much any direction you want it to, but mine is a little squeaky. Now, the big purchase was the Shure SM7B, which is what you're hearing me talking to right now. I came from an AT2020 USB mic, but I wanted something a little more high quality, and because I'm always sitting at the desk, I opted for this. Because the SM7B is a really quiet mic, it's essential to pick up something like a cloud lifter, which gives it 20 decibels of clean gain. The audio interface I'm using is the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2, which basically just converts the analog audio from the SM7B into digital audio for the computer to understand. All you have to do is plug in the XLR cable, and then the Scarlett just plugs into the computer. For whatever reason, Focusrite decides to make their products the most obnoxious color possible, so my solution was grabbing this $15 carbon fiber vinyl wrap from Amazon and wrapping it. For my first wrap job, I'm actually quite pleased with how it came out. It looks so much better now. There's still a little bit of red trim showing, but this is actually a good thing because the Spider-Man Funko Pop I have next to it matches so damn well. Speaking of, I actually have a couple more throughout the desk. One is this R2-D2 chilling over by the left speaker, and then Eve, the robot from Wally, in the PC case. I honestly just love how these look in my space, and they're an awesome way to add some character. And with that, right here is my dream desk setup for 2022. This space is always evolving, and of course, there's always going to be new things I want to add, but right now, I'm just really happy with how it functions and looks. I'm able to get all my work done here, but also sit back and relax playing some games. If you found anything in this video interesting, I'll have links to everything in the description down below, so if you want to pick up some new stuff for your setup, there you go. I know this was a long one, so to those of you who made it to this point in the video, I want to say thank you, I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed the video, please do drop a like and subscribe to the channel for more tech content in the very near future. Alright, I'm out. Thanks again for watching, and take care.